Alright, what's up guys? I'm making a video for the new players to Conqueror's Blade. You know, the people that just started the game and are a little confused with how everything works and how what everything is. Yeah, because I know when you start, things are like, it's going to take some getting used to. So, just making a, trying to make a decent guide for those new players to help you all out, you know. To give you information on things, the, the tutorials and give you information on. So, you know, the first things first, uh, obviously, when you start the game, you make your character, right? Customize her, customize her or him, however you want to. And, um, when you're done give it a name confirm it when, you when your character is made you're going to be loaded into the training yard and here's where you're going to choose your um your class that your, your, your character's class that you're going to be uh playing also if you haven't gotten conqueror's blade get it it's free on steam such a fun game 100 percent get it i'm probably going to make another video on why you should play conqueror's blade for people who don't have the game or haven't heard of it but uh for now okay back to this back to the guide so here Alright, so after you make your character and you load into this training yard, you have to choose 1 out of 10 classes, right? As a new player, bro, I know, 10 classes are kind of like a lot to choose from, like, because you don't know too much about the game, you don't know what classes are good, you don't know which playstyle you're going to enjoy. First thing I'm going to say is, don't stress out too much on the class you choose, alright? Because you can get all of them, you can get all of the different classes eventually, and you could be switching them out, like, easily, right? So, like, you're not stuck with the one that you choose right now, so don't worry too much about it, but you do have to choose one to, like, max out, like, right now, so I'm gonna give you an overview on all the classes, so you kind of get an idea of which playstyle you want to, you know, you want to choose. First one is Short Sword and Shield. This is the Frontliner class. 100% you'll be in the middle of the fighting, uh, right in the front lines of it, uh, you'll be there in the heat of battle at all times usually right you're charging in there you're super tanky and um yeah that's where you are if you want to be a frontliner 100 percent go with this class if you want to see all the action definitely go with this class all right glaive is a damage dealer packs a lot of punches this season especially they do a lot of damage um oh i should mention that these abilities aren't the only abilities that the class has in the skill tree that there are actually um, other abilities right so, uh, their ult, not this one, the other ult that they have, they have a second ult called Flying Reaper. Absolutely does a shit ton of damage. Um, yeah, so if you want to be packing punches and doing damage on enemy heroes and enemy units, Glaive is a really good class right now for damage dealing. Longsword and Shield is your support tank class. The only class that can heal other units and allies and even yourself. You have a healing ability that literally heals everyone around you. Really strong ability. Um, you don't do that much damage, your damage output's pretty pretty low but but in general like this class is a very good support tank class right if you if you're if that's what you want to be doing being a support tank healing others you can also speed up other units this is the class that you want to go spear right now has been kind of underperforming they're kind of like an armor penetration type class um they've been falling off they kind of need a little bit of a rework or like some kind of buff um yeah it's still a good you know if you 100% if you like how the class looks like, just go for it. I honestly, um, hopefully they change it. Hopefully the devs change them up soon or something. But right now you don't see that many spear players. Mainly because the class is kind of underperforming. Oh, the next one is Musket. Musket is not a moderate class. I would say this is a hard class to use. Okay, like it's pretty difficult. There's a pretty big learning curve and skill, ba skill gap. Uh, I'd say honestly, I would personally think it's the hardest class uh, to use out of all of them. You are a kind of a range support with your abilities, you could set them on fire with uh, this liquid fire ability. You could explode them with your ultimate. You have another ability called Caltrops, which slows enemies down. It's a really good ability. It slows enemy troops, enemy heroes. Um, it's just kind of a difficult. It's kind of like a very technical support class. There's a kind of a learning curve, but if you're into a challenge, 100% muskets fun. All right. Shortbow. If you want to play a ranged class. Shortbow is probably the best range class in my opinion. I on I think so 100%. Um, they are a really good support for PvP. If there are two frontliners fighting and you're supporting your frontliner, uh, you could really change the tide of the fight. Like, you're you're just an abuser from that distance. You do you have a lot of abusive abilities, uh, stuns and some good damage. So Shortbow, really good ranged uh, class. Polax is my favorite class. 100% believe it to be the best class in the game. <laughs> That's just biased though on, on my part. They are a super CC stunlock class, alright? So, if you like stunning heroes down, like, constantly CCing them, this is the class for you. Their entire kit is usually just all stun, stun abilities, stagger abilities. Like, it's just, they are a great class. 100% love Polax, alright? Bow is 
a range, it has a longer range than short bow. They're really good at sniping um, enemy archers, enemy muskets and stuff. So, bows, I haven't, you don't see that many bow players, I don't know too much about this. It's like the one class I don't know too much about and I haven't really messed around with. But uh, yeah, if you want like a kind of like a longer range bow, bow is the class to go. Dual blades is your assassin PvP class, alright? Like this, this, it's meant for your hero killing, alright? Uh, if you get caught lacking in, in a siege, you're just by yourself, you're kind of low, you're running away, and the Dual Blades catches up to you, it's, it's over for you. Alright, first of all, they can go invisible to infiltrate, um, and literally, really annoying ability, it's like, you actually can't see them in sieges most of the time, you're like wondering where they are, uh, and then they just come and they stab you a bajillion times. Look at that, they just stab you a million times. So, if you're caught lacking in sieges, you're gonna die to dual blades, all right. And the only thing is with dual blades, you gotta be careful because you're also squishy. You don't want to get caught out yourself. But if you want to be a huge PVP damage dealer assassin, this is the class for you. Now, Dachi is a life steal samurai class, all right. Now you have, you have your, you know, Nadachi with you. Its abilities gives you these life steal procs, and your M ones basically heal you. I've seen Nadachi's go from like five HP to like max HP, so. Really good class for lifesteal. It is pretty difficult class to use. It's a unit killer, uh, especially. Like, you can really uh, mess units up. Um, so, yeah, that's also a pretty fun class. So, alright, whatever. Now you have 10 classes. Choose one of the ones that you like, you know. Choose the one that you just want to start with. Uh, for this, I'm just do short sword and shield. And we'll go to the next part of this tutorial. Alright, so after you finish the tutorial... Well, pretty much finish the other parts of the tutorial, the sieges and everything. You get placed in this screen where you can choose three units that the game just gives you off the bat. Uh, I'm straight off, do not get the Demence Archers, do not get the Iron Cat Ball Riders, alright? These two units, just do not get them, they're not worth it. These guys cost too much money to resupply for a new player. Um, resupply I'll go into later, but like, and they, they just, they're just not good right now, okay? I'm not, they're just not good in general. Just don't get these units, don't get the Demence Archers, alright? 100% what I would say for the three units that you want to get, um, get the swordsmen, these guys are, do a really strong charge, um, the Rattan round shields, and then pike militia, if you want to go all three infantry, I would say get these three, okay, they're really good, all, all three of them are pretty good, if you want to get a ranged, I would 100% say get the muskets, the iron cap, um, archivistors, and then get these three, so if you do want a range, I'd say get him, get this, and get that, if you don't want to range, um, get the Rattan Round Shields. I know it says like, oh, this one may be stronger than the Iron Cap because of, you know, it has a little bit more. I'm telling you right now, that's not true. Iron Cap is better, okay? It's just, they're just a better unit. Um, yeah. So, after you choose those three, I should also mention that all of these are green units. They're different tiers of units, right? There's green, there's blue, there's purple, and there's yellow. Okay, so these guys are all green units that you can choose from. So, let me just choose these three, go to my next thing. Um, now you have a choice of one blue unit. All three of these guys are blue units, and the game lets you have one for free, okay? So I'm going to explain how these guys work. These guys are Iron Cap Spearmen. Huge shield unit, very, 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 very tanky, okay? Um, if you have units behind you, you will be tanking all the damage while the other while units behind you are uh, doing damage, okay? Like archers behind you, even halberdiers behind you, whatever it is. You're just like this huge tank unit. They're honestly vital in a lot of sieges. If you want to be winning sieges, Iron Cap Spearmen are like super helpful in winning sieges, okay? Perfection Pikemen are really good for their charge. Their charge does a lot of damage. It can actually even like demolish uh, an enemy hero's HP, alright? So their charge is really good. Halberdiers are. Okay, I'm gonna go into why you shouldn't get the Halberdiers, okay? They The unit's not bad, 100%. It's not like a bad unit, okay? But. I'm going to explain something. So you know how there's green, blue, purple, and yellow units? To get the purple unit, um, you need to get the ones before them, okay? So the Iron Cap Spearman is a blue unit. The purple unit, their evolution, is what I'm going to say. Like, imagine they evolve, right? They're, the higher tier of them is, uh, is, I think it's like Imperial Spear Guard. Yes, the Iron Cap Spearman, they change into Imperial Spear Guard, and it's a very strong tanky unit has CC resistance it's like a really 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 good unit but before we can get that unit you have to get the iron cap spearman okay so if you like tanky units 100% get this guy because then you have to get him anyway if you want to get the um, imperial spear guard for prefecture pikemen you need to get them before their their purple evolution is called 
uh, Imperial Pike Guards, right? I, IPG Imperial Pike Guards, and they're also a really strong unit. They have this thing called Pike Walk. It like knocks enemies down. It's really, really, really strong. So these two, both of their evolutions are really strong. Okay, Imperial Spear Guard, Imperial Pike Guard. Um, Halberdiers, their evolution is kind of bad. Okay, Halberdier Surgeons are not that good. They're like they're very mediocre you're not going to see them in sieges you're not going to see a lot of people use them so if you get these guys they evolve into the halberdier surgeons and you kind of like waste it's like a wasted evolution like th there's no point of getting it which is why like these guys aren't bad like the halberdiers themselves aren't bad but like i'm telling you right now if you get the pikemen uh and then it's just you can lead into that evolution like if you want to get the the pike guard you need these guys you know you need to get the premature pikemen and you want to get the, the spear guard, you have to get the spearmen. So their evolutions, you need to get these two before them. I mean, you need, for this one, you, you need to get the evolutions, the, the, these ones before the evolution. Um, this guy's evolution is not worth it. That's why I'd say, like, choose one of these two. And then the first quest, you just do a little PvP. Um, and after you beat the PvP, you level up. And anyway, I'm going to further explain what I was talking about. Four, okay, so you see how the prefecture pikemen, right? This is a unit tree, by the way. This is the whole unit tree. It may look a little confusing at first. We'll get used to it. Don't worry. Um, the prefecture pikemen, say, um, is a unit, right? It leads into imperial pike guards, okay? So this is the evolution of the unit. So you have to get them before you get these guys. And these guys are really cool, and really strong, right? Same thing with Ironcast Sermon, I got them. You see how, like, look, it's, it's literally a straight line. Like, I got them, and now I could get this. I don't have to get these guys before I get this. The Halberdiers, they lead into Halberdier Surgeons, and these guys just aren't good. That's why I was saying, don't get the Halberdiers, get the Professor Pikemen, or get the Iron Cap Spearmen. Okay, anyway, now you're here in the game, and we'll move on to the next thing. If you click M, just, this is something that, like, a lot of people get confused on, and everyone always asks me questions on, like new players. You see a world map, and the world map has different, you know, like, towns and fiefs, and the best I can explain this to is, like, Bannerlord, where you can, like, take over any of these towns, and people think, like, oh, is there anything I'm supposed to do in the world, okay, out, out in the world? I'm gonna tell you guys right now, okay, how the world map works. On Saturdays and on Tuesdays, um, from, at least for EST, it's, I think it's, like, uh, 9 to 10 EST for one hour, houses, which is pretty much the clans in the game, can fight for land, okay, so this one's owned by Ming, 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 this is owned by Hightower, 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 these are player owned houses, okay, player owned houses, I don't know, I can't even unlock houses yet, um, they basically can fight for land and take over land, and then you get rewards based on how much land you own, you get money, you get items, uh, at the end of the season you get like a huge clump of rewards, right, eventually, and then that's, but what's one of the end game fun parts of this game it's called territory war okay look it says it right here on the top right territory war starts in two days three hours so as a new player you're really not going to be interacting with the world map until you progress a little bit and then you can join a house and then participate in these wars okay that's like the fun stuff in the game that's like the end game fun stuff to do other than that you'll see resources around the map right like logging farm and uh so yeah all, you could basically create you could build ballistas, you could build, um, build artillery with these, with these materials, you could build unit, uh, supplies with these materials. I'll go into what unit supplies are in a second, but, so, like, as a new player, though, you don't really need to. I'm telling you right now, as a new player, you don't want, don't stress yourself out on all these resources. Like, you don't have to do any of this. Um, most people I know, they don't really even, um, go out and get these resources unless they're trying to build some, like, gold tier artillery or purple artillery all right so I'll, I'll go i'll explain it in a bit so look here let's go to warbands go to our barracks yep you see our unit here right this is a unit that i chose it says 100 out of 100 ready for war it's just their unit supply okay it's at 100 uh the more you use them the it'll go down and then as it goes down you're gonna have to resupply the the kit don't worry it's very cheap and they only cost bronze coins okay to resupply them all right for the lower tier units like you start using them in combat they're basically their gear basically gets damaged and you have to like fix it you have to resupply it it's going to cost you some bronze coins it's not too much nothing crazy when you reach the higher units like iron reapers like gold units the purple units you know especially the cavalry the cavalry is very expensive which is why i said not to get the bow riders these guys they cost a lot of money to resupply okay the higher tiers they are um 
that's when you want to like consider you could instead of paying the bronze coins to resupply them you could pick up resources from around the world and actually craft them at the uh, unit armor refineries you know when you click tab you'll see like a lot of cool stuff you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out later um, what they all do but basically for the unit armor and, and refinery overseer and all these people all these things right uh, that's to like create unit kits instead of like paying the bronze coin for them because I'm telling you it can become really pricey so some players are like okay I'm not I don't have the money for that I'm gonna go gather these resources I'm gonna craft the, su the, the supplies I need to resupply my units okay so that's all it is as a new player I'm telling you do not worry about it you don't have to be going around picking up resources and stuff it is annoying it is annoying to go gather and carry it back to your place and all that stuff all right don't worry about it uh, all right I actually logged into my own main account to show like the other stuff off because oh uh, you have to be a certain level to unlock certain things in um uh, in, in your new account and you'll eventually unlock them I'm not trying to go through the entire process it'll be easier for me for me to show you here so this is my character right so uh, your skill tree you'll eventually unlock that I think like level 15 or something uh, around there somewhere around that say you chose um the glaive okay let me go to what skill tree that I haven't unlocked okay so here's the bow skill tree right uh as you as you fight like in sieges and um in battles or whatever the hell you, you're doing right you get skill points, okay, from doing well with your weapon, okay, from getting kills, hero kills, whatever the hell, you get a certain amount of skill points, right? These skill points can be used to unlock abilities and um, increase their tier. So, like, look, I have Flame Arrow, Flaming Arrow 1, okay? It goes into Flaming Arrow 3, which increases damage and also, like, you know, yeah, it basically affects, it increases the damage, but some abilities even, even change the effect of it. Like, for example, like here, look. It's just sharp exit. This is the level one ability. You just jump back, right? The level three ability, you can actually click it twice. You know, this press twice thing. That's not there for the level one level one ability. So like, as you upgrade your ability, you can actually change it and um, really upgrade it. Okay. Um, and then obviously each class has two ultimates. There's lightning bolt and then there's exploding arrow. Like, I mean, you could choose between them. So that's just the skill tree. The main thing you want to know is that your skill points uh, can be used to upgrade your skill tree and get different abilities so you can see that there's actually more abilities in three like as it shows like in the tutorial there's a lot more abilities um then yeah you can like and as you can see like dude i have a lot almost i have a lot of a lot of classes maxed out or at least i have a lot of classes progressed enough for me to use them and you can easily switch between them all you're not stuck to the one that you just have okay now that's just the skill tree okay i'm gonna explain how armor works in this game it's a little confusing, okay, and I'm going to make it the least confusing for you as possible. Click on skills, go to your class. If it says heavy armor, use heavy armor. If it says light armor, use light armor. If it says um, medium armor, use medium armor, okay. With heavy armor, you actually can only use a certain amount of weapons. You can't use, like, see, I have heavy armor on right now. I can't use dual blades with it, okay. So if you do want to be switching classes, you're going to need the different armor sets um yeah just just to point that out so yeah if you for armor uh they're, 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 i should have mentioned that there are three types of armor just heavy armor medium armor light armor it'll tell you in your skills which armor for which class just use that okay okay i'm going to talk about how to level up your units all right and get them to a max level so for example let's look at my guy right here it is a level 18 unit right it's maxed out so ways to level up your units so if you click J, right, and you click on PVE, Bandit Raid, uh, I don't think it's unlocked right away for you to be a certain level, it is one of the fastest ways to increase your unit. It, this is literally like a unit XP farm. You can only do it five times a week. I've already done it, so it says, you know, reward zero out of five, but um, five times a week, you can do Bandit Raids, and it gives you a lot of XP, all right? And you can, like, steamroll your your units to a higher level. So when you unlock Bandit Raid, make sure you do it with your unit, and you, you know, they'll... You'll, you'll see them get a lot of XP. Expedition 3, or Expedition 2 and Expedition 1, the Expeditions basically also give you good unit XP. It's less than the Banner Raid, but these you can use, you can do it in an infinite amount of times. So you don't have to, it's not like five times a week, you can just keep on doing Expeditions, and you can get unit XP through that. And that's one way to do it. Banner Raid is probably the best way to get XP. Another way to get XP, um, click U, you look over here, so it says Shared Unit XP, okay? So while you're doing sieges and you're doing like um, any any you know PVP match, you get some shared unit XP um, through playing the game. Okay, just through playing the game, you'll get some shared unit XP. 
with shared unit XP, you can level up your units. So, for example, here's my level 2 unit, okay? It's level 2 Rattan Marksman. Say I played a bunch of games, right? Without, I, didn't, I don't even have to use him, by the way. I don't have to be using the Rattan Marksman. I could just be playing the game, getting shared unit XP. I could just click plus here on this thing. See that yellow thing? And I could see it says right here. Like, I could use my shared unit XP to get it to level 6 without even using the unit to start off and make him level 6 right away. Um, so yeah, that's also another way to make it, to get XP. The last way to get XP, uh, you can also get XP through sieges, by the way, and just regular PvP. Um, another way is unit medals. So doing quests, um, and through other, other things, there's, there's a bunch of ways to get unit medals. You can get unit medals that gives you shared XP. So like, say I'll use, like, I'll just use, like, I'm not gonna use all of this, but I'll use 15, uh, bruh. 15 unit XP. I got plus 75,000 XP. You see this right here? It increases the unit XP that you have, and now I can upgrade them to level 7. A little bit more. So that's another way to increase unit XP. Okay, so with unit leveling up, not only do you increase the base stats of the units while they level up to like level 18, they'll get higher stats in general, you'll also get a unit skill tree, okay? So there's a lot of content in this game, I just gotta say that. There's just a lot of content in this game. As they level up, they get a veterancy point. Each level is one veterancy point, and with them points, you could spec into different buffs for the unit. So you start off with slashing, increases their, the units, this unit's slashing armor penetration by 5%. You go to slashing damage by 2%, you know, and you can keep on going up, and each thing adds different stuff, and you can choose a different line. So like here, this, if I went, if I went with this full line, it increases the number of enemies each soldier can attack by a single strike by one. This one, it reduces Perfector Kill's, Perfector Drill's cooldown and durability by 20 seconds. This one, it reduces unit um, resupply cost by 20%. So, like, as you can see, like, each unit has a different veterancy line that they can go, and they do different things. You can honestly wildly change how your unit is based on, like, uh, one of the biggest examples is... The, the, the palace guards, you can make them super tanky. These units are super tanky if you go the bottom line. If you go the top line, they do a, a lot of damage. You can see the difference. It even changes their armor. And top line does incredible damage, the bottom line makes it super tanky. So, what you spec into does affect the unit. Alright, so let's just go to um, let's say something like the halberdiers. Increases damage dealt to infantry, increases damage dealt to cavalry. Like, you see, like, Changing whatever uh, points you put into it can really affect how good the unit does. I recommend if you if you were thinking of what which line to do to put into a unit, I would say to actually watch a video on um, the best line to go because some units are bad in one line, some units are really good in one line. To change to reset their points, you have to get a scroll of renewal. These do cost money, or you could get them through events and stuff. I have I have seventeen. I didn't even pay for this. Like I just got them through. Um, the game just gave it out for some reason um but yeah otherwise you would actually have to pay or get them through some kind of event so that's why i'm saying that like when you get a unit you want to try and figure out which veterancy line you want to go right away do not like you know put some into some units you can put some into different to like both lines but you always try to, most of the time you want to try and finish the line like you want to get them to the end goal okay now that's just unit leveling Okay, we're back at the unit tree and how to get other units. Okay, how to get more units and unlock them. Also unlock the heroic era and the golden era. So on the top left here you see honor. Honor you get through playing games, uh, even from like getting rewards, you get honor. And honor can be used to unlock units. Alright, so for example, do I even have it? Like here. This unit here costs 14,000 honor to unlock, right? You'll see at the bottom it says zero level 5, 14,000 honor to unlock. To get him, I need 14,000 honor. I have 18,000, I could get him right now. But, as a new player, to unlock the heroic era, you right now you're in the silver era, okay? As you start off, it's the silver era. You need four blue units before you can get into the heroic era. So when you unlock four blue units, because right, the game starts you off with one, you need to get three more. So say you started off with iron cap, Spearmen, you need to get three more. So you could get the Perfector Guards, you could get the Perfector Pikemen, and then get like even the Halberdiers. You could, they're, they're different lines, you know, like you get the Archers. By the way, this is the Archer line I should mention. This is the Archer tree. 
You could get any of these archers, any of these blue archers. You could get, oh, uh, there's no cavalry, there's no blue cavalry, actually. You could get the squires. You can get, um, the Rattan Marksmen, Rattan Vipers. You need four blue before you can get the heroic era. And then when you get the heroic era, you need to get four purple before you can go to the golden era. In the golden era, you can get Iron Reapers, you can get Pavis Crossbowmen, the Archibusiers, the Shenji grenade, uh, Grenadiers, and the Gold Cavalry, Monastic Knights. So that's how it works. Make sure you get four blue units to unlock the heroic era, four purple units to unlock the golden era. It's pretty simple. All that is based on honor. Get honor through playing games, pretty much. Okay, so runes are pretty game changing. How you get runes is by leveling up your hero. Uh, every five levels you get runes. Um, so you can see, like, yeah, it starts at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, it goes to 50. I actually haven't even reached 50 yet, but runes are game changing. They can really uh, affect your stats and affect your playstyle. For example, this one right here, it makes my throw shield, it reduces the cooldown to 3 seconds, okay? Thunderstruck reduces all the enemy's defense values by 15%, okay? Um, for example, this one right here is increase all defensive values of allied heroes within range by 7%. I could change that to just increase armor penetration of val uh, value of heroes by 8%. I could do that to reduce defense values of enemies with 5%. I could just switch it out and I could change how I want to be playing uh, the game. Alright, here I can, for every 20% that health falls, stamina taken is reduced by 3%. I could switch that out to increase my stamina to 100 points. So, runes are pretty game changing and they can affect your playstyle. Alright, so it's important to get like the good ones and then mess around with it. It's fun because it's, it's like a bunch of different passes that you can just test out and try. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about instead of runes are your skill points. Okay, every time you level up to like level 60, you get a certain amount of skill points. And you can put them into strength, agility, armor, or toughness. Since I'm going heavy armor and I usually play heavy armor classes, I put them all into armor because I like being in the front lines. I like doing, uh, being really tanky, right? And like holding holding the fort down for my allies, so I put them all into armor so I can live, okay, but say I had something else, say I was like, um, say I played something like the pike, okay, with the pike, I wouldn't put it into armor, I would put some into mainly agility, because it does piercing damage, so you can check what, um, what damage your weapon does by, by basically looking at the skills, right, so, let's see this here, let's say, Pike strikes an enemy will deal 140% of your base damage, of your base piercing damage, right? So this is piercing damage. I just check your abilities and see if it does piercing damage or slashing damage. If it does piercing damage, you want to increase agility, all right? Increase your hero's piercing damage. Um, if you want, if it does slashing damage, you increase your strength. That does slashing damage. Uh, so piercing penetration is actually buffed by strength. You know, that's why the game is a little weird. It's balancing is a little weird. Um, your, piercing ar your piercing armor penetration means that your piercing damage breaks through armor. That is increased by strength, but for agility, your slashing armor penetration is increased. So, it's kind of weird, right? So, you, you kind of like want to mix it up. If, if I was going pike, I would increase some in my uh, agility mainly, and probably armor still. But if you're going a heavy class, I would say just go full armor. If you're going to go longsword and shield, I would say go uh, full toughness, because your healing is actually scales off of your HP. Yeah, so that's just that's just the the um skill points. You can also reset them every single week. So like every week you can free reset it. So like you know you can also use an item, but like don't even mess with that. Just mess around with our attribute points and you know mess with, and you get a free reset every week. Uh, it resets on uh, Sunday night, like oh or, yeah Sunday night at like 1 a.m. EST, and you just get a free reset. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna become a long guide. The last thing I'm gonna mention is the seasonal challenge. So your seasonal challenge is where you can um, unlock seasonal units. Not only do you have all the unitary units, all of these different units that you can choose from, there are even more units from the seasonal tree. When you unlock this, you have to be a certain level. I forgot which level exactly, but you can you can go through each different seasons units seasons. You know, all these seasons, oh my god. Go all the way down, you can go, you've got the Viking season, you got the Chinese season, you got the, um, I don't know which one that one is actually is. Um, you know, and basically, you can look through the units, whichever one you think looks interesting, looks cool, that you really want to, like, use. Look up videos on, like, the best units, and then try and aim for them. But, like, say, start start of the game, um, I want to get... The Genissaries. How you get the Genissaries, right, if you do quests for them. Like here it'll say like, win, two win six expeditions. 
get 40 hero kills assists in free battles, achieve victory at three six rebel camps, and I, I finish these ones right right here, like take a firearm unit into five battles, you know, win four out of four field of siege battles, right? Then you unlock the unit. They literally give you the unit. This one, you don't need honor for. Like, these things are like quests that you do, and when you beat these quests, you can unlock the unit. Like, you could just get them, right? And I'll show you, like, a, a season that I completely finished. Uh, not completely finished, but, like, here. Like, look. These things I got, right? Like, I did all the quests. I got the gray-haired garrison from doing the quest. So, that's another thing to look out for for new players. All the seasonal units are not you know like you can go back and get any of the seasonal units you want to right i'm working on getting i'm trying to get these guys the the the, uh, the um salad the salad daughters or the salad daughters, whatever I'm trying to get these guys so like even though this is like a season was a season four unit i'm still able to go back to it do the quest for it and get the unit so this is pretty much the last thing i want to talk about is the seasonal challenge unit right now we are in the season the rome season the gladiator coliseum season these are the seasonal units um, to get. These guys aren't unlocked yet, but like... And for a season, by the way, you know, you have your battle pass. Obviously, $10. Uh, you get the battle pass. You can go up the battle pass and get your get your cool attire if you reach 100. Seasonal stores, just regular stuff you can buy with uh, blades that you get from the battle pass. Uh, the runes are... Oh, I should mention runes. Yeah, I should mention runes. Okay, that's gonna be the next thing I mention. Alright, so it's not the last thing, but anyway, what I wanted to show here was mainly the, the seasonal units, so you can get all of these units through doing quests, and not through honor. Okay, it's been a longer guide than I thought it would be, honestly, but uh, I'm just quickly going to go over the last thing, which is the unit doctrines, alright? These are the unit doctrines, I'm explaining how to get them and how they work. So you click X, you unlock the War Scholar at a certain level, and then you can get uh, the unit doctrines through treaties. Uh, you get these, I don't even know, you just get a bunch of treaties. Eventually you'll get a bunch of treaties. Um, and you can excavate the sites and you get these unit doctrines, right? So, how unit doctrines work are, it's like a huge buff to your units. For example, here is like for Javelin Infantry, this doctrine increases the Javelin damage by 180. This one right here for uh, Sword and Shield gives them an Iron Sight, so it unlocks an ability for them. Uh, increase their, their defenses. This one right here is a Lancer Cavalry Doctor. Increases their charge damage by 225. This one increases health of your unit by 300. So like you see, like these are all like different buffs that kind of like ruins for your own unit. So like I'll show you something crazy. So like you can have a unit and you can max them out on their doctrines. Like really put on a, some really good doctrines. So other than watch, it's like like plus 360 health, plus 600 h uh, health. Uh, you know, increases a damage by 110. Um, you know, this one's increased damage reflected in sieges by 100. So, like, you can really, like, buff a unit with, um, doctrines alone. Like, even here, you know, you have all these different... So, yeah, for your, for the units that you're maining, like, the units that you're really, that do really well, that you really enjoy, you want to put doctrines on them and you want to buff the hell out of them. So, even, like, for example, here, you could, like, um, you know, I could come here and take on the slashing doctrine, put it on them. Now... They have slashing defense by 65 increased. And that's something important you should know is that you can't have repeats of doctrines. You can't have like five health doctrines. You know, you can't like repeat and like stack them. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the unit doctrines. And also, pretty much it for this guy, this long guy that I just made. Alright, uh, hope it was helpful for people. You know, if you have any questions, put in the comments, you know. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, if you have any questions, just put in the comments and I'll answer them. Hopefully this was, this helped answer some questions and help new players out.